Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 20 over mobile devices and client-side virtualization. During this chapter we will learn about operating systems used with various mobile devices. We'll compare hardware components used with mobile devices and laptops. Learn about configuring, securing, synchronizing, and troubleshooting mobile devices that use the Apple iOS. We will configure, secure, and synchronize mobile devices that use the Android operating system as well. We'll learn about the basics of server-side and client-side virtualization. Now there are pretty much four main operating systems for mobile devices. Those are the Android, Windows, Apple, and still lingering around in some businesses, Blackberry. Now here's some data that's been pulled from this year, so it is current right now. Uh, you can see that Android simply just devours the rest of them. It is the market standard. Overall though, the two most prolific mobile operating systems in the world are the Google's Android and Apple's iOS. And you can see that just by the sheer margins of how everything after the Apple iOS just drops down into single digit percentages with Windows having more usage than the Blackberry as Blackberry is pretty much on its way out has been for the last few years and it's a whole nother realm when you're dealing with Blackberry in an enterprise environment. Now our primary focus will be over Android and Apple. In general mobile operating systems are going to be factory installed. Android operating system is from Google and this is Linux based. It's used on a variety of smartphones and tablets today. Uh, if you haven't seen an Android commercial or you've never been around an Android device, uh, you've been pretty secluded. It's used on, as you saw the numbers in the previous slide, 82% of devices. Nearly 83% earlier this year. Now the Apple iOS is based on the Mac operating system that's been around for many years. And it's used on the iPhones, the iPads, and iTouch devices. As you can see, it is on a you know, just under 15% of the market today. Um, the big difference in these is the way they're developed and how their their apps are developed, besides the obvious user interface changes. So uh, we'll take a look a little bit here at our Android operating systems. As I said, they are Linux um, based and Linux and Android apps are open source. The operating system is open source so people can download those and make changes to those. The There's been a lot of releases of the Android and they've been based on dessert names as you can see here all the way back to Froyo for frozen yogurt if you've never heard that term through um, in the last year there's been a lot of changes going from Jelly Bean to the Kit Kat operating system Lollipop and the latest is on Marshmallow which is on different Nexus devices so you, if you ever if you have a smartphone or you probably get annoyed if you come up to that point where it says you have a operating system update and it's usually really lengthy when you're going to do an update don't just hit OK or whatever make sure that you're plugged in to a power source because a lot of times it's huge updates like that will drain your battery in both the download and install procedures that take place. If you're curious about your own device you can look up your device uh, get the name of it you know if it's a Samsung Galaxy S Galaxy S6 or whatever the case may be and you look that up you know just do a simple search in your browser for uh, your phone and look up operating system. Here's some more information about the Android operating system. Like I said, it supports Windows. Um, there's panes as you as if you play with a device. There's 3D graphics that can be included in there. Um, as with almost every device out there, whether it's Apple or Android, it connects to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular networks. Um, you can buy like an iPad device, let's say, that can get a mobile service from Verizon, Sprint, whatever the case may be, uh, AT&T. So you can look for those. You know, if you are traveling 
and you are a heavy device user, that might be a great device for you, especially like for a salesperson where they can access the internet while they're showing different information to a client. So uh, the cellular network devices have become more and more popular in the business market. As I said, Android apps are sold or free, freely distributed from various sources and vendors. You can go to Google Play Store to get different sources for your apps. If you want to find a different app or download a book or a movie or whatever, that is where you're going to go for an Android device. As take note here, most apps are written using Java. So, in, and those are going to use the SDK or Android Software Development Kit for developing those apps. I just want to show you a quick glance here of Marshmallow OS on a Nexus device. You can see the overall layout here of you know, the home screen. Here in our docking area, you can see we have our back button, our home button, and you'll find out that these are pretty much standard on devices uh, using the Google or the Android operating system. And you can see on your screen you have various apps. Uh, most of them are standard apps and they're adaptable. You can modify them to your liking. Uh, this is just an example of a screen from the settings window of what all you can do in changing your phone, whether it's allowing rotation, finding out a little bit about your phone. This is a great spot to go to find out like your on most devices you can find out your uh, version of your phone uh, sometimes in the about settings you can find out such things as your hardware and your software uh, your Mac address for your Wi-Fi if in case you're doing Mac filtering on your home Wi-Fi you may need that Mac address to be able to put that address into your router to allow it to get onto the Wi-Fi now for Apple, iOS is proprietary software from Apple. It's very uh, close-knit. That software can only be used by Apple devices. Um, now, you, of course, you know there's software we can use to emulate, you know, an iOS on a Windows, you know, computer, as well as you can flip that as well. But um, for your apps, those are going to be completely through different. Those are going to be found through your App Store, your iTunes App Store. Um, so those iOS apps are screened by Apple before they will be put the, out on the App Store. So it's not like you know Google Play where you know Billy Bob can create an app and upload it. Um, it's it's a lot more stringent at Apple. If you notice here, iPads and iPods must be activated by connecting them to a computer that has iTunes installed. This um, may be a little dated because uh, the way that the iPod and iPads come out of the box now. So as long as you have a uh, Wi-Fi connection, generally, uh, not always that, but you can always set up your Apple iTunes account later. So it's not necessarily tied to activation anymore. Um, there is a process that's been around for a long time called jailbreaking that allows owners of these Apple f products to download software from sources other than Apple. If you want to find out more about jailbreaking, you can go out and search for that and, and watch some videos and learn a little bit more about that. Obviously, when you do this, you do void the warranty with your Apple product. Now, here's a little dated uh, picture from an Apple device. This is an iPhone that has the iOS version 5. We're currently at 9 and 9.1. So one thing to note here is, yes, the versions change, but the overall layout of the Apple iOS has not really changed much over the years. Um, the icons may change a little bit. There are obviously different features with each version, but uh, generally speaking, when you look at one, you are pretty familiar with that device if you've ever used an Apple device before. And here is an example from the Apple 9.1 installed on an iPhone, probably 6S. Um, you'll notice, like, here's settings on this one. You see the icon's a little different than what the setting icon is on 
the one from 5.1 but you can see that your home button still at the bottom you'll see that this row here of uh, your standard apps that are on your home screen pretty much stay the same so if you've seen an Apple device you can work with an Apple device where I said that Android is open source iOS is closed source. You only have access to those um, APIs which are calls to the operating system. Um, apps must be tested and approved as I said before being sold to the App Store. So it's not as easy as with the open source Android apps here. Uh, those can be taken from many sources. There's no assurance of the quality of this app when you get it. So you know there's it's up to you as to which you prefer but if you're going to uh, want to mess around with developing apps try it for both operating systems and you've expanded your market as well as you can see here the market is not always convenient for developers on the Android side